Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips, I'm Captain Xavier, and today I'm going to be doing a complete disassembly and reassembly of the Nerf Vortex Ravonix 360. And, uh, yeah, these blasters are complicated. They are more complicated than dart blasters or rival blasters, but they are not impossibly complicated, as a lot of people seem to believe. Um, you just have to pay attention and figure out what things do, and you can figure out where everything goes. So let's get this thing open and uh, figure it out, because it really is fascinating how, like, the loading mechanism and all of that works in this blaster. So here okay. we go. All of the screws in the grip were the same. What does it take to get the grip off? Will it come off, or do we have to... I think we actually do have to take the blaster all the way apart. So there was one screw that was covered by the grip when it was in the f fully forward position, so we'll get that out of there. Remember, when you're taking screws out, make sure you've got the right size screwdriver or you'll strip out the screw head. Also, be sure to apply plenty of pressure, especially the first time you take a screw out. That one is filthy. Interesting. Um, apply plenty of pressure and give it a good twist, and you'll, you'll sometimes actually hear it pop. And that is the, the, the screw coming loose, because when they put these in the first time, they actually um, cut the thread in the, the screw post, and so you have to make sure that you get that loose. And if you don't apply enough pressure, you'll strip out your screw head. And I do have a video on how to deal with stripped out screw heads, but you're far better off just not stripping them out in the first place. So, so far, all the screws are the same length. I suspect these ones up here in the rail might be shorter. We will find out. That is often the case. The ones on the rail appear to be a little bit shorter, so be aware of that. Should now be able to get it open. Take that cap off. And that comes off a lot easier than I thought. The only thing on this side is the, the slide. There is um, one screw and a cap holding it in place. Oh, a little bit more. We've got a silver screw there. And then our handle comes off. There is nothing else on here. I think that's, I guess, the rail bit there. Uh, we'll go ahead and take our rail catch there out so we don't end up losing it. Now, there are essentially two major subgroups in here. You have the firing and uh, loading mechanism, and then you have the cylinder rotation mechanism. And they are, they're separate enough that they come out in two major groups. But we need to take a couple of screws out before we can do that. First of all, we need to take the other half of the handle off. There are two long lag screws up front. And that there is a, an unthreaded portion on there. There are two long ones up there. We will need to separate this arm here, which is part of the rotation mechanism. Uh, and it connects to the priming and loading mechanism right here with a fairly long washer-headed flag screw. Uh, we then have a... Another long washer-headed screw right here that will need to come out. Well, that, that does it for separating the two sections. Um, now, where this starts getting complicated is there are some screws that you can only access when the priming system is not at rest. Now, there is one that we need to get to before we move anything. Down here, see how well you can see that. Down in there, there is a screw. Can I, there, there it is. That's the one. There is a cutout, so you can get to it. Need to remove that. It is just a plain silver screw. Not the same one as holds the handle on. So keep that one separate. We then have three small washer-headed screws here on the top. Those three will each need to come out. One of them has a cutout that allows you to get your screwdriver in fairly easily. One just doesn't have anything in the way. And then the last one is at kind of an awkward angle underneath some spring stuff here. And you just have to go in at it at an angle, which is odd. And you might lose it in the shell. 
Come on. There you go. Okay. And then the final screw that's holding all of that in is underneath this front muzzle and priming mechanism. So you will need to move the priming mechanism back a little bit. Uh, we are going to go ahead and take that out or allow it to shoot out. Be careful with this as you just saw I shot the nub out and it's very easy to shoot the spring. It is a very heavy spring and that is what locks the priming handle forward. Now when we move this back a little bit um, way under there See how well you can see it. Right up in there, there is a washer headed screw that you need to get out and it's blocked. And again, you have to go in at an angle and it's just a weird place for a screw. I don't know why they don't have cutouts or a hole that allow you to get your screwdriver in there. It is a short washer headed screw. It is unique, but that is where that goes. Now, we can lift the entire firing mechanism and loading mechanism out of the blaster. And we will take a closer look at this complicated looking mess in a minute. That leaves us with our rotation mech. So pretty much everything else that's on here is mostly the the cylinder and the rotation mech for it there is then the trigger back here but that's a single washer headed screw and that allows us to take the link arm and the trigger itself out we then have a pair of washer headed screws up here a washer headed screw here and two regular screws back here and by removing those five screws we will be able to remove the cylinder. Uh, the two washer headed ones are the same as the three that came up out here and the two regular screws back here are the same as uh, the one that was buried deep in there. There is, we'll get this washer headed one out of here first so we can get this part off. This is the uh, cylinder rotation lock. It's what locks the cylinder when the priming handle is back. And then when you go forward, it, it unlocks and you can have it be free. The, the spring is captive, which is nice. The washer headed screw that holds it is the same as the trigger rotation one there. Now be careful when you take this part out because there is some spring tension here that the cylinder is under and there is a little little washer here that likes to wander uh, and that will then allow you to take out the priming mechanism. I'm not going to disassemble the cylinder. Uh, there are just screws that hold it together, but there is no reason to be taking that apart. And so I'm going to leave it together. We then have our rotation mechanism and all of this stuff that is involved in that. And there is right and wrong ways for it to go. We will be looking at how that goes in properly later on. Uh, this arm can simply slide out. Everything here is, I don't believe there are any screws holding it together. And I would just assume, oh, I'd love to leave most of it together. Interesting, there is a brass ring on there that holds that in place. So this, spring-loaded locking mechanism comes out. Its spring is not captive. Be careful of that. And then there is a part on here, and I'm not entirely... Oh, okay. So it just kind of puzzles its way out. Let's see what else we have on the inside of here. We have our ratchet tab. This is the, uh, the bit, just like in the rival blasters, that... Um, locks the slide as it goes back and locks the slide as it goes forward. Uh, it is spring-loaded so that it more or less wants to remain pointing down. Uh, I actually had to replace that when I opened this up to take a look at it. It somehow that spring got stretched and damaged. This was the original. It got all mangled somehow. I don't know if it's focusing. It's not focusing. It got mangled. Uh, so I had to replace it. 
Um, it needs to move freely and it needs to return to zero, as it were. It needs to get, be pointing down when at rest. It needs to ratchet this way, ratchet that way, but it needs to go down. Uh, if it doesn't, then it will lock your slide one way or the other and you won't be able to prime the blaster. So if you're not able to move the slide, it's probably that that has gotten, the spring has gotten worn out or something. So be aware of that. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. It's simple enough. There is a another one of those same washer headed screws holding the spring to the shell. And then there is a, another one of those long, long, washer headed lag screws Ugh. Um, so you've got two long ones and a short one and then that will come off of there and you want to make sure that there isn't any grip or stuff keeping it from rotating freely and that will come off we have our jam door which really only does open that far i don't know why they even bother because it doesn't seem to actually give you access to anything useful. But that is as far as it can physically go. But it's held on with a, a plate that's not held in with any screws, so that can come out. We then have our... Um, whoop. Well, these parts fall out, apparently. They were here and... Whoop, here. Part of that cylinder locking mechanism, so that can come out. We then have a spring-loaded uh, disc release lever right here that allows you to have the disc just fall out. It's held in with a uh, another one of those same washer-headed screws. And then this will simply lift out of there. And the last piece we have is some spring-loaded catchy type mechanism here. I'm honestly not entirely sure what it does yet, but we will find out. There's a plate there that comes out. Uh, same washer headed screw that we've seen before and be careful there is a non-captive spring underneath there. It goes right there. There is then a spring-loaded lever on there that's just held on um, looks like it just pops on and then there is a torsion spring that doesn't come out so that comes out of there and that that is everything out of the shell now we look at the really complicated part all right let's take a look at this assembly this is our priming loading and firing mechanism all built into this one complicated housing and i am not going to take it apart any further and the reason being is that it is designed not to come apart there are bits that are very distinctly glued there are clips that i believe are solvent welded and there are some pins that are um friction friction in and maybe solvent welded in i don't know but i'm not going to try to take it apart because i believe if i did it would probably break and i wouldn't be able to there is also no reason to take this apart. There are a whole bunch of locks in here and all of them are necessary. There is no benefit to removing any of these locks. They won't reduce jams. They won't increase uh, reliability. It will simply make it so that you can dry fire the blaster, which will likely result in you breaking it. Um, these lever arms are under a great deal of spring tension under this torsion spring. And if it dry fires with, uh, you know, without having the, the mass of the disc to slow it down, it will probably crack uh, and you don't want to do that however i do want to show you how everything in here operates and how it all interacts so that if something goes wrong with your blaster um, there's a good chance it might be something in here and knowing what it's supposed to do will allow you to figure out if the blaster isn't doing something what would be causing that what sorts of malfunctions that could happen in here would cause certain things so when everything is sitting at rest, this arm is actually supposed to be b down. Uh, it is held down uh, when the priming arm is all the way forward, uh, and it is actually uh, locked in place. Uh, this part from our that was attached to our rotation mech is in fact the catch that holds this arm down. And when you prime it, as soon as the cylinder actually rotates into battery, or rotates into position, this releases and this arm snaps up. So the resting position for this is in fact 
down. And that is important, as you can see, it does in fact um, force this piece, or it allows this part to move up. So this arm is currently, as you can see, in the up position. When this goes forward, it pulls it down. But it is capable of sliding down on its own, which is important, we will see. So this is normally forced down. And when we go to prime the blaster, when we force this back, we are forcing back that priming arm. Um, it forces, as you can see, that goes down. But when it gets to here, it actually locks. So the slide cannot go forward until that lock comes down. But that's okay, because when we get all the way forward, this arm is going to snap up. And what that does is that pulls a disc out of our cylinder. You can see there are five grooves at the top of each one. When this rotates into place in that position, this arm snaps up and pulls a disc out of the cylinder and loads it into this red cradle. It's, it's slightly more red than orange than anything else. And you can see that that cradle is currently um, vertical. So what it does is it pulls a disc out of the cylinder and forces it up into that cradle. And it does it with some violence. It snaps it up. Uh, in order to make sure that it comes out of that cylinder. Then, when that's up, it unlocks the slide. So when that popped forward, it unlocked our slide, and now we can pull the slide, the, the priming bar, back forward. And as we do, it rotates that cradle that the, the, the disc is in. And that is, in fact, what rotates the disc from the orientation it's in in the cylinder into the orientation that it needs to be in to fly out of the barrel. So that then pulls that forward. We can then see there's kind of a what would be the equivalent of a dart door uh, in, a, in a disc blaster, uh, something that is blocking the, the barrel um, right there. And as the disc gets pulled forward, it forces that up. And as it does so, it releases this arm. Right now, this arm is spring-loaded and wants to go in, but it can't because that dart door is blocking it, or the disc door. When this comes forward, the disc forces that door up, which then releases this arm, which then snaps inward, which is what locks our slide. You can see the slide trying to move this arm, but it can't. That is what locks the slide when the blaster is loaded. Because you remember, you could operate the slide as much as you wanted until you actually chambered a disc, and then it would lock. That is what is doing that. So if your blaster is able to move back, even though there's a disc in there, which would almost certainly cause jams because it would try to load another disc into that cradle when that disc, and there already is a disc in that cradle, um, that's probably because something has gone wrong with this lock. And you'll need to take a look at that. Now, once it's all the way in battery, there are a pair of locks underneath that are now being forced down by that disc. And I'll, hopefully I can show them to you. They are this little button here. And there is a second one even further way up under there. Those two are basically the, the disc sensors. Those are what detect that there is a disc in, in battery and those unlock the trigger plate. Um, this whole gray plate right here is our trigger plate. It is connected to our catch, which is currently holding the throwing arm back. Um, but it is currently locked. Um, it, having the disc in unlocks those two pegs, which are two of the locks. The final lock is connected to this loading arm on the other side. So you can see as we pry, as this gets pulled back down, this little arm comes up and disengages from this section of the gray plate, and that is what finally fully unlocks our trigger. This arm gets pulled forward along with the priming, when the priming bar goes forward, um, part of the rotation mech train. Part of our rotation mech um, pulls that arm back down and holds it down, locks it down, uh, or pulls it down until it engages its lock. So. Once this is down and a disc is in, now if we move our finger away from the muzzle and push on our trigger link arm, 
the blaster will fire. Hooray. And then everything will reset. And that is how all of the locks as far as that goes. Now, the there are a couple more moving parts. There's this arm right here, this white arm, this lever right here, and a lever right here that causes a whole bunch of things to move. Now, these are all interact with our um, disc release lever, that little switch looking thing. When you pull the trigger and force this forward, that bar slides over and locks the disc release. So if you have the trigger pulled, for instance, you're slam firing, whatever, you cannot operate the disc release. So you cannot do both of those at the same time because you wouldn't want to, that would be bad. You wouldn't want to be partially releasing a disc and then have the throwing arm go forward. It would jam in bad ways. So that is a disc release lock. These two levers both get pulled when you pull on the disc release lever. Uh, this one on top, you can see it's compressing very slightly that spring. That is one of the things that is putting tension down on the disc and keeping it from falling out of the barrel. So that's what's holding it in place. The other one operates that dart door. Uh, and again, that dart door is another thing that is putting tension on the disc. Uh, it also uh, actually has an arm that physically forces the disc forward uh, further out of the barrel. And you can see it also locks our slide. So while you have the disc release pulled back, while you're trying to release the disc, you cannot prime the blaster. So if you have either the trigger pulled or the disc release arm, things are going to lock. So that is pretty much how all of the locks and mechanisms in this work. So if you think about what problem you're having, if you cannot, if the, the priming handle won't move, it might be one of those locks uh, halting. Um, if it's not loading, then there may be a disc jammed partly in somewhere. Um, any number of the parts that need to move, like those pegs that need to come up and unlock our catch plate. Uh, if there's a bit of grit or a bit of, you know, wood chip or a, a Lego minifigure hand or something that's jammed up in here. Uh, those are things that could prevent things from moving that need to move. And knowing what those parts are supposed to do should help you diagnose it. So if one of the things that's supposed to allow something isn't allowing it, or if it's able to do something that it's not supposed to be able to do, it's probably one of these locks that has gotten fouled somehow. And so understanding how they work will hopefully help you figure out where the problem is. But that is as far down as we're going to go. So we are now going to start reassembling. Right. We will start the reassembly with the rotation mech, starting with this part, which is sort of the rotation mech base, as it were. And the first part that we're going to install into it is going to be this part, which is the catch for that loading arm. I mentioned it gets locked down. It gets caught on this hook right here. And then when this gets moved, it then is able to pop up and load the disc. It's going to go into this slot here. The tab will be for, pointing down. The hook will be pointing away from the round section. We're going to rock the hook into that slot. And then we should then be able to rock it forward so that the spring gets into position and then slide it down. So um, it should look like that. There's our catch. Now keep it in place because there's nothing holding it in place and it does like to sprung. The next part that we're going to be installing is going to be this part. which I'm not entirely sure what, the, mostly what this part does has seemed to hold that into place. I think it might actually be an artifact from an old prototype that didn't ever quite get eliminated or reused because there's some screw posts and some look like mounting bits that don't actually mount anything. Anyway, this also just kind of gets puzzled in and it's kind of odd how it goes in. You can see on here, there's this ridge here and then there's kind of a, whoop, a notch right there. And this is going to lie in that notch under that ridge. 
There is a another ridge here, but then there's a, a short little section of it that doesn't have the rest of that side ridge. That is going to go under the ridge on that one. So you kind of hook it in and then it will lie down in place and that will keep it from coming loose without being rotated up and down in order to get it back out. So you rotate it down and in and it will provide some amount of holding this in place, but not, not perfectly. So be aware of that. And then the cylinder, this simply goes into the cylinder. And currently it'll rotate freely because the part that actually locks it into place hasn't been installed yet. We will be installing it later. It will go into that slot, but uh, if we put it in now, it will interfere with other things. So we're gonna stop, stop there and move on to the shell. All right, we have a number of things that are going to get installed onto this side of the shell before we can put the major components in. We're gonna start up here with our ratchet lock. But it goes onto these two posts up front. The spring goes on the upper one, the actual rotation mech goes on the lower one. And then there are a couple of screws on the side with the spring. We're going to use one of our small washer headed screws just to keep the spring from coming off that post. And then on the other one, we're going to use one of our long uh, washer head screws that have the non threaded section. And it, it feels like it should definitely be way too long, but it's not. This does need to be a very secure post because there's a lot of tendency to try to force this mechanism where the, the priming handle is locked on that, that ratcheting bit and somebody feels that it shouldn't be and tries forcing it. So it needs to be solid or you'll break that post off. So they went with a long screw. It is one that's gonna tend to get stripped, so be careful with it. Okay, next we're going to install our disc release arm, this part. And it has a spring on it. Um, it's simply going to go into the slot there and then lie down and then it will You'll have whoop, the spring, come on, come on. You will behave your spelf. Goes onto that post right there. And then just yet another one of our small washer headed screws to make sure that that spring doesn't wander off. And now our disc release is spring loaded, lovely. We're gonna do the jam door while we're up here, this part. And it simply slots onto there. And then we have this part, which is just a retention plate that goes over the top. Doesn't have any screws or anything. It just sits right there and holds that in place. Very, very simple. Next, we're going to install a spring-loaded uh, link arm right here, this part. And it has a slot that you can see right there that is gonna go down on this screw post right here. Simply sits on there. It does have a little spring-loaded catch that will prevent it from going forward if it hasn't been released, but that's all well and good. There is then a spring that is gonna go down into that slot uh, in front of that screw post. So it's just gonna go in right there. You can see how that's now in there and that will force the whole thing in that direction. We then have a cover plate, this little part, that sits right on top of it. And then finally, it is held down by one of our larger washer headed screws. All right, last thing we're going to install before we start installing the larger assemblies is going to be some more link arms. There's one that goes down here, it's this part. And it's got one side that's got a hook 
and that's going to go on the left towards the barrel, uh, around this screw post, and then it'll go over that screw post so it slides right there. And then we have this part. Which has a large hole and a small hole. If I can get it over, there you go, now you can see contrast. Uh, the large hole goes over this screw port up here, the small hole over the little peg there, so that it causes that to move. And that is going to be part of the release of the, uh, the cylinder lock that locks the cylinder in place while you're priming. Next thing we're going to install is this assembly. which is part of a priming assembly, and it simply goes up here in the front. Now there is a metal post sticking up right there that is connected to this little mechanism. You're gonna to need to pull that down so that you can then slot that into place. It goes forward, it has the part that that ratchet hooks on. And as you can see, as it comes forward, it unlocks this and pushes it forward and then pulls it back. And that's part of how that loading arm gets released. All right, we are now ready to install the cylinder and the rotation mech. Now there are a couple of things that we will need to attach to it before we do, and they are fiddly bits. First of all, remember that this catch is not as well attached as you might think, so be careful not to sproing it. And then on the far side, we have this white section, and it is not symmetrical. Uh, there is a larger gap and a smaller gap. The smaller gap should be up, the lower gap should be down. Onto the metal post that's got the spring on it, we are going to put that white, that little washer, this part. It's gonna go right there. The notch, I don't believe matters which direction it is facing, so it just needs to go on there. And then finally we have this part, which is part of basically the mounting bracket and it's got a, a hole in there, and then it's got a tab on one side. That needs to be facing to the left. Um, it's got the, the larger section. You can kind of see how this section here is larger than the section up there, and that corresponds with the gaps there. So this needs to sit down on there, and needs to be able to go down into those gaps so that that will lock into place correctly when this comes forward. Now, holding this together so that things don't get sproined, we're going to place it down into here. There we go. Oh. I recommend, as soon as you get it in, putting in one of the screws up here on the front portion, because if that pops up and slides forward, that little washer will come out. So we're gonna put one of our small washer headed screws up here and tighten it down. There is a second one just a little bit further over. We'll go ahead and put that one in here as well. And then on the other side, we have two of our regular silver screws. And last but not least for holding all of this in place, we're going to use one of our, the last of our long washer headed lag screws, for lack of a better term, and it's going to go right here, which holds all of the assembly together and hold also secures that link arm section right there. Excellent, so that can now move freely. Now we're going to install the actual arm that actually does the rotating. The Cutout section should be pointed up, and it is going to in slot into that hole right there, that slot. Uh, the, the little spring-loaded arm should be pointing down. Now, also keep in mind, there is a tab right here sticking out the bottom. That needs to go on the right side of that little tab on that part right there, on that catch release. Uh, you also want to make sure that the, that little catch release is locked into the actual catch there. So when you release it, it should move the catch. Uh, there is a notch that that lines up into right there. You need to make sure that those are in fact hooked together. So this is gonna go into here. You'll need to make sure that this arm is down to open up that slot. This goes in, lift it up over that tab 
and it should then hook onto this post here. And now, when we push this arm back, the cylinder will rotate. And then as it comes back, it will complete the rest of the rotation. You can see as this goes forward, this is now free to move once it gets past a certain point. And then as it comes back, it locks back into place automatically and the cylinder will rotate the rest of the way. Okay, we are now going to prime this back so that the cylinder rotates and so that this can now move freely. And we're going to install this part. And it is the final part in this whole link assembly. It has a screw post hole right here. It's gonna go on this screw post back here. And then you're gonna to need to seat the spring into its little cavity. And it's gonna hook on the far side of that, of this link arm down here. We're going to attach it using one of the larger washer headed screws. And now it is secure. And when this comes forward, that automatically gets released and moves back. So when this moves forward, this assembly moves as you saw right there. Cylinder rotates most of the way. On the return stroke, it rotates the rest of the way. On this stroke, this gap is now lining up for that loading arm to go forward, but you'll notice we are now out of alignment with our loading gate. When this goes forward and the cylinder rotates that extra bit, that then realigns our loading gate. So that is how all of that is properly rotating our revolver. At this point, it is basically just a complicated revolver. Uh, next, we can install our trigger, which is fairly straightforward. The spring is fairly captive. The spring should be down and it will install there. Make sure that you're not caught on anything. It does tend to get a little bit catchy. You have to make sure the spring gets pushed down far enough and is seated so it doesn't block the trigger from moving. We then have a link arm here that connects to this screw post and to the tab on the screw or on the trigger, and then we're going to use another one of our large washer headed screws. And now we've got our trigger assembly. So, next on this screw post right above that link arm, we're going to install this part. Uh, one side has three notches in it. That's gonna fit on the three supports that are on that post arm and it just, sits on there and just better aligns that, keeps that from moving around, from wandering on us. On the link arm up here on the priming handle, there is a, the screw post that's going through this slot. We're going to use the shorter of our two, of our uh, lag screws, washer headed lag screws, and that's what's going to secure that arm in place. All right, finally, we have the big assembly for the priming, loading, firing mechanism. And I find that it's easiest to install it if we have this uh, pushed all the way back so that the cylinder is lined up because the, the loading arm is gonna need to align into that. And it's just a little bit easier if you have that that way. Now our muzzle section and our priming section do kind of socket together and it's easiest to install them together. And then the real trick I've found is trying to get this, the loading arm, underneath this part of the rotation mech. And you just kind of have to work it in there. And it will eventually all pop into place. We need to then align this part of the priming mech with this upper part, just by bringing them together. And it should bring everything together. You should be able to tell if it is aligned correctly because you'll see that the screw posts are now properly aligned. Make sure that the trigger arm, that this lever is in the socket there or when you pull the trigger, nothing will happen. I've done that, it's uh, not fun. All right, to secure this part of the, uh, the priming mech to this lower part, there is gonna be a washer headed screw on the right hand of the two screw posts. It looks like there should be two screws, but there is in fact only the one, and it's the one that we can reach, which is probably why they did it that way. 
All right, now to secure everything, we've got those three screw holes that are on the top that are going to use our last three smaller washer headed screws. Be a little tricky to get them to line up. There we go. Back one's the easiest because there's nothing in the way. And the middle one is the hardest because it's got all sorts of stuff in the way. But if you come at it from an angle, you can get in there. Okay. Now we have one last regular screw and it's going to be going into right there. So right above that little piston spring arm, there is a cavity that leads down to a screw hole deep in the bowels of this thing. This should be the last of our regular silver screws. Next, we are gonna need to prime it slightly so that we can get to that screw post. Uh, and that is what is holding the muzzle in place. And we're gonna be using our one short washer headed screw. Again, we have to go in at a weird angle because there, there's stuff in the way and I don't know why they did it that way, but they did. Okay. Now, Prime everything through. It is actually now primed, so be aware of that. All right, now we're going to attach our priming handle. And it's gonna come up underneath. And there will be two screws, which will use these regular washer, or regular lag screws, long lag screws. And finally, for really functionally internals, we're gonna wanna pull the priming handle all the way forward. And in this little square, cavity here, we're going to put in this part. Which is the priming handle kind of locking nub. Be careful with that spring. It is a very strong spring and is very prone to shooting either itself or that nub across the room. So that's why we're putting it in last. We All right, we're now going to walk through the entire priming process so we can see how everything is interacting. As the priming handle starts to come back, we unlock from that, hopefully don't fling it about. And for the first section of travel, nothing else really moves until we get back to a certain point and we start pushing the rotation mech arm. And you can see that it starts rotating the cylinder. We also, at this point, actually prime the blaster and it comes back and catches. And then once we go all the way back, that is when things get interesting. So you see this arm popped forward and that would have loaded a disc if there had been one in the blaster. Now at this point, we start moving forward again and we pick up that rotation arm and we start pulling it back, which also pulls down on our loading arm and unlocks our cylinder. At which point, the cylinder rotates the rest of the way and the loading arm gets locked back into place. Now everything is back at rest and ready for us to do it again. This time, I'm actually going to load a disc into the cylinder. Like so. So we start coming forward the rotation arm gets picked up and it rotates the cylinder so that the cylinder now lines up with our loading arm. We get far enough forward, the loading arm is released and it pushes the disc up into the cradle, which I don't know if you can see it, but there is now a disc there in the cradle. The priming arm gets released and we can start moving forward again. We do so. We pull that loading arm back down. The cylinder rotates the rest of the way and now we are ready to fire. And it will fire. So that is how it all works together, which hopefully will give you some idea if something's not working, maybe you'll be able to work it out from then. We then have just some cosmetic things. We have this obviously, our rail, mount section, which just is a little bit of rail mount that goes right there. And then of course, 
our rail locking nub goes right there. And that's it for this side of the blaster. On the other side of the blaster, we just have the one quick bit. We have our handle that comes up and then on the forward post, we have this little bit, which just goes on there. And then we have our one unique silver screw. And that is now in place. And now we can assemble the two sides. If all has gone well, this should go on fairly easily. Sure enough, look at that. Seam closes up nicely. Put on our stock cap. And now we can put in screws. Now before we do that, I am gonna try to prime it and make sure things aren't locked up. Sure enough, it rotates correctly. We will put a dart, a disc in there. And it should now fire. And it does. Hooray. All right, we can start putting in screws. We have three short screws that go up here in the rail, as is commonly the case with blasters that have rail on them. Now remember, when you're putting screws back in, always rotate counterclockwise until you feel it or hear it clunk into place. That's the threads aligning. You don't want to cross thread and chew up your threads. And our three short ones. And then all the rest of them are the same length, so it doesn't matter which ones you put where. Remember, there is one screw hole that's being hidden by our handle. So you need to pull the handle back so that you can get to that screw hole. But you won't have gone far enough back to actually lock it, so. And there we have it, fully reassembled. Let's check all of the controls. We should be able to prime as much as we want, as long as it's not loaded. We cannot pull the trigger. If we are pulling this back, we can pull the trigger, but we cannot prime it. So that is correct. That was one I learned as a result of this. If we put a disc in it and we prime it till it loads, then it will lock and won't let us prime again. But we can push the release and the disc will simply come out. That is working correctly. Still not sure what that jam door is supposed to really show us. Oh, I see. So the jam door does in fact show us the um, cradle um, that is in there. So if something got jammed in there that wasn't like, wasn't an actual round, we could see it right there. Um, and you can see it then get switched forward. So pull the trigger and it fires. So. That is the full disassembly and reassembly, or at least as far as I was willing to go without breaking it, of the Ravonix 360. It is complicated, but not nearly as complicated as I think most people think. It's basically just a, rev a pump action revolver. Um, it's really in that upper mechanism where all the locks are that's complicated. And like I said, there is no reason to open that or tinker with that because there are no locks in there that you're going to want to remove. The only thing I could even think somebody might want to remove would be the priming ratchet. But that does serve the purpose of, of making sure you fully prime rather than partly priming, which could cause jams and all of that. Um, again, the locks in here are to keep you from breaking it, so I recommend leaving them in it. If you have any further questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and let me know. The survey for the next blasters that you want me to show will of course still be down in the description. Feel free to vote on which ones you would like to see. I don't know where I'm gonna go next. I might do another Vortex blaster, but I will probably go back to doing either Rival or um, Elite blasters, possibly more Mega. We will see what uh, the survey say. So vote in there. Hope this was helpful to somebody and thank you guys for watching.